Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Cash and Ken Manning, Western Wisconsin Video Productions. I chuckle a little bit because we're waiting for the national anthem, <laughs> and that never happened. We're out wrestling. Uh, joining me today once again is Scott Millsner. Scott, thanks for being here, and my goodness, uh, they jump-started us right away. They caught us by surprise. <laughs> well, I'm, I shouldn't be surprised because you just never know. Every tournament has their own little... Uh, you know, nuances, their little quirks, what they do. Uh, I just think uh, Cash and the administration, Jared Hemmerspach, Derek Mashik, uh, the whole crew around here because they have just been uh, so kind whenever I'm coming along here to do whatever it is, football, basketball, and, of course, today, the Wrestling Invitational. This is year number three of the Invitational, and we've been here now uh, three straight years. Well, Scott, what do we got going on out here? Uh my mat, the, the right mat, I'm going to call it. Uh, we've got you're, you're, Cyprian, the top, you're the top one. Cyprian Klein of Cashton versus Platson of Prescott. Uh huh. Oh, and I see why you say the right, because you're on the right side. Yes, sir. I'm a little slow sometimes in the morning. You know, I'm still waking up. But uh, I am on the bottom mat. I'm the one that's moving the, the uh, camera right now. And Scott is on the top. We decided to go with the, the horizontal split screen here today. So you can get a, hopefully a, a good picture of everything. But thanks for joining us. And uh, it's a full day here. And uh, Scott, you, at, uh, you have, uh, we both have 106 on the, uh, on the picture here. Your wrestler is who? Cyprian Klein of Cashton. Okay. And I don't have the first name. I guess we, maybe we should have gotten uh, Sometime today we'll get some weigh-in sheets, get first names on the other there you kids. Go. But uh, Klein of Cashin versus Platson of Prescott. End of period number one. Uh, Platson with a, a couple of takedowns, some near fall points, is leading 7-1 after one period. Well, and this is a round robin. And so what they do, and this is kind of one, again, uh, not the not the fault of anyone, but uh, with track wrestling, and track wrestling is a wonderful program. Let me tell you, we would we have uh, I think improved the uh, the state of uh, wrestling with track wrestling out there. But uh, it does not give you the first names all the time uh, on your on your bracket sheets. So we'll just have to play that one by ear. We'll make it work, is what you're telling me. We'll make it work. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, Moan, could be Maine, but I think it's Moan of uh, TLC, and I think that's Turtle Lake, if I remember right. Yeah, Turtle Lake Clayton. Okay. And uh, Ekstrom from Wausau East. And right now, looks like uh, Wausau East on top here. Trying to pick up a pin. He's got a cradle locked in. At least I'm thinking that's... I might have to take that back as we look to see here. I'm not, I'm not used to these two uniforms yet, these singlets. Looking at the uniforms, Ken, I think that's Turtle Lake Clayton on top. I on top. believe I see a TLC on the back. Oh, there you go. Yep, now oh, I see that. Thank you. Still now that I'm not officiating anymore, my eyesight's returned. <laughs> it's so much better. <laughs> I don't know why that is, why why uh, people are always saying you can't see out there. You know, you're right on top of it. <laughs> well, thanks to all those sponsors that you were probably able to see at the uh, prior to this tournament getting started. We have uh, uh, this tournament is under my what I call my regular sponsors. Thanks to all of them. And we'll mention them every once in a while uh, throughout uh, today. Once I find my sheet again here and uh, kind of give everybody the heads up on, on who is kind enough to help support the uh, showcase here of the Cashton Third Annual Wrestling Invitational. We got a timeout on my mat as uh, looks like Moan of TLC has a little blood on the nose. You got that all cleaned up and they're cleaning up the mat. We have some, uh, again, some good officials here today, which is excellent. Boy, this uh, talk about state tournament trail, conference coming up next week. 
and look forward to uh, four weekends, and this is week. This is the start of it. So five weekends. I told my wife, I go, I go. Well, I said for the next five week weekends, uh, you won't see me on Saturday. I think she breathed a sigh of relief. No, <laughs> I was going to ask, did she smile or was she disappointed? <laughs> well, it was like, really, it's there. It's this time of the year already. I'm yeah. like, yep, it is. Doesn't seem possible. January is almost out the door. It is. It's crazy that way. So 8-1 the score here in the bottom half of your screen with Moan of TOC out in front. He's again looking for that near side cradle. He's got that front headlock. Now he's going to try and snap and spin, but no points there yet. They stay in that neutral position. Got a 9-5 score on the top. Ken uh, Platson of Prescott is leading Cyprian Klein. 127 left, third period. Just saw Jared Hemmersbach and Kerry Millsna down there in the front uh, of the screen. Those two are mainstays. Jocelyn Milsna helping out. She is uh, the guru when it comes to uh, track wrestling and the tournament director. Big thanks to Jared. Uh, been the AD here for several years, but uh, one of those guys that really goes out of his way to make things happen. He was one of the key people to to get this tournament off the ground, get the things rolling, and uh, yeah. really genuinely cares about the kids and the sport. and. Uh, Thank him for that. that. That's not always the case. No, that's very true. I, I always get a kick out of him. Whenever a team comes in, he's right there. Like so many of the ADs and uh, or uh, you know a director of the of the evening's event, um, and uh, but he's always talking with them. You know, he's shaking the coach's hand and telling them, you know, follow me. This is the where you need to go. And but then he talks with the kids, you know, and they're laughing. And you know, he's he just keeps things light, and having fun. That's what it's about. But he has a serious time, too, though. So. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Busy man. He's a yeah. herdsman on a 2,000-plus cow dairy in the area here. And, yeah. and got his own kids at home, his wife. And uh, a lot of credit uh, goes out to him. A lot of credit deserved. Absolutely. 10-1 score here with a major decision going on right now for Moan of TLC, who starts in the top position. Again, this is the bottom half of your screen. Got a good single leg. And we're run out of time here in period number two and we'll begin the second uh, check that the third period of action with uh, Ekstrom deciding to go in the down position. Got a final on top Ken uh, Platson of Prescott a 9-5 winner over Cyprian Klein from Cashton. 9-5 all right thank you. This uh, is the round robin which means there's going to be uh, there's five wrestlers in this uh, tournament at 106 pounds. We'll see Grimslid of North Crawford Seneca in the next round. I think he might have had the top seed possibly if I remember right. Well, they haven't put down uh, your weight class on your mat yet. That's uh, like one, is that 132? That's Catherine out there. Brookwood and West Salem Bangor, Ken, but I did not catch a weight class. Yeah, that's 132. All right. And I always mess up Catherine's last name, so I'm not even going to try. <laughs> I'm just going to say Catherine. <laughs> Macklehose is what it looks like to me. Is I, it? I, yeah, it's something like that.
10-2 the score with 10 seconds remaining here in the bottom half. And that'll do it. So 106 pounds, round robin number one. Round one is complete, and it's a win here for uh, Moan of TLC. Top Matt Ken, we've got Sarver of West Salem Bangor winning by pin at 113 over Catherine from Bang Brookwood. All right. I figure out what in the world I did with my. I don't know what I did with my uh, sheet with all my great sponsors in. I hope it didn't fall down the bleachers, which could have happened. No, nope, here we are. Well, they're running some of those uh, weight classes. You went up to 144. I'm at 132. When they do the eight-man brackets, they need to get those running, and uh, that's what's going on here. So I'm in the bottom half. Uh, this is a round robin with Brookwood. We've got Brookwood here and uh, Simons. I have Pikenen. Pikenen and Simons here in the bottom half, and it's a 2 0 score right now for. I'm thinking it's Simons. It could be Simmons. Probably is Simmons the more I look at that. Bacon and trying to come out from underneath and not able to do so just yet. As there's uh, about 30 seconds remaining in period number one. I believe, Ken, I've got Fleming of Prescott and Lund of Black River Falls on the top mat. 4-1 lead for the man in red, which would be Fleming from Prescott. Okay. Ten seconds left, first period. Time running out here on my mat. And the score will stay at 2-0 in favor of Simmons. Pickenin will defer and have his choice in period number three. Pikenen trying to keep Simmons down on the mat. Boy, Simmons has a nice little stand-up. Able to get up and out of there. He's trying to get up and out, but now back down to the mat they go. Lund of Black River Falls turning the table. Uh, Fleming from Prescott it had been... Uh, in control, I don't want to say dominating, maybe, but uh, was in control, uh, having some pretty good success. And Lund of Black River Falls caught him here, and has Fleming in some trouble on his back. 50 seconds left in the second. And of course, as I say that, <laughs> Fleming turns the tables on Lund, and 
Lund on his back. Now another uh, back and forth a turn. Lund from Black River coming up with the pin. 325, second period. Taking a look at Pikeland finds himself uh, in a bit of a difficult spot here now as he was reversed and pinning combination, the cradle is in on him and it's now gonna be an eight nothing lead for Simmons of Wausau East. Well, they had a little trip get down here <laughs> today. I wonder if they didn't stay in Sparta or something maybe last night. Wrestlers are going to be back up on their feet. This again at 132 pounds. Top Matt Ken, I believe we've got Wright of Turtle Lake Clayton versus Bailey of uh, Wausau East. Now a takedown again by Simmons, and he has a 10 nothing advantage. And going in for what I call the far side cradle, he goes up over the top. He has the turn, picking up some more back points. He's on the verge of a tech fall here over Pickenin of Brookwood. Pikenin is able to break that pinning combination. 13-1, and now the takedown makes it 15-1. Simmons would like to get another turn here and pick up a tech fall. He's got 25 seconds to do it. He's got that wrist control, and he's got that half, and he is gonna get some back points. He's gonna get the tech fall He's looking for the pin. Down to 10 seconds. Piking in, putting up a good fight here, trying to keep those shoulders off the mat. And time will run out. And the three near fall, it'll make it an 18-1 tech fall win here for Wausau East in Simmons. Picking up the victory. Top mat, no score after one period. Right of Turtle Lake, Bailey of Wausau East. Well, thanks uh, to those sponsors that we'll be mentioning here throughout, and you'll see them uh, in between the uh, matches, so to speak, here when they take that break, of course. But uh, Westby Call-Up Credit Union picking up uh, our great support. Our, our uh, thanks to them. And uh, Scott, I gotta come back to you. Uh, you who uh, won in your previous match and what weight was that again? It was Lund of Black River Falls with a 325 pin over Fleming from Prescott. Oh, okay, thank you. Still no score between Wright of Turtle Lake Clayton, Bailey of Wausau East. We're second period, 113 to go. On the bottom half, we're going to look at Sprosti of North Crawford Seneca taking on Gomez of Brookwood. Right now, Sprosti, who I believe was the number two seed coming in, he was one or two, had a nice record. He has got the cradle locked in. 
And now he has the fall. This again, the round robin, so 144. Round one is complete. going to move to 150 pounds on the bottom half. Well, let's see who do we have out here. We have North Crawford, Seneca, uh, Glidden. And it looks like uh, West Salem Bangor in uh, Stelter. <coughs> Again, that's the bottom half. One of two matches in the round robin at 150 pounds. Our other 150 match, Ken, 2-2 two -two tie starting the third period. And again, that is right of Turtle Lake Clayton, Bailey of Wausau East. Thanks again to a couple more of our uh, sponsors. Well, let's take a look here. How about uh, the Westby Co-op Creamery? Maybe I mentioned them. We do appreciate them, along with WCCU, the Westby Co-op Credit Union. <laughs> Winner by pin on the top, Matt Ken, <coughs> right of Turtle Lake Clayton. Okay. Uh, 420 pin over Bailey of Wausau East. Two nothing the score here on the bottom half with Glidden of North Crawford Seneca trailing now, trying to work out from underneath here. Going to pick up the reverso and tie this up at two apiece. Oh, they already bounced all the way up to uh, 285 for you, Scott. And I believe that's a result of, I did hear uh, Mr. Stritchko mention the rat tail coming up. Uh -huh. So with the uh, round robins, some weight classes are going to have five rounds. Others will have three or four rounds. So. Okay. Uh, as you said, Henry Brigham of Cashton is up uh, on your top mat. Uh, versus Stebbins of Brookwood. Henry with a takedown here, 142 to go first period. It's Grayson Stebbins for Brookwood. Henry out front working uh, into that hammer lock. We call it... Uh, King Stebbins over to his back. Uh, pretty good position here. Assuming these guys have met before, I don't remember. I guess I haven't seen them if they have this year, but. I'm trying to remember. Uh, I think they, I want to say they had the dual meet already. I could be off on that, though, but. There is your pin, 106 first period. Henry Brigham going to be our winner. Bringing the top seed coming into this tournament at 285. 2-2, the score here at uh, 150 pounds yet. This is Glidden of North Crawford Seneca and Stelter out of West Salem, Bangor. Trying to come up with that pinning combination. Had a, had a chance maybe for a near side cradle, but was uh, Glidden. But Stelter really fought that one off. Now an armbar series coming up here by Glidden, and he just couldn't get the turn.
Top Matt Ken uh, the Rat Tail at 175. Crop West Hill and Bangor Ford of Black River Falls. Okay. Thanks to the Viroqua Dental Center helping us out today, Dr. Leanne Klum. And the Vasatag Funeral Home, one of uh, sponsors that have been on board practically from day one. That's been, uh, wow, almost uh, got to be somewhere around 12 years ago now. Started doing this, so it's been rather interesting. Seven to the score with Glidden of North Crawford Seneca on top here. They're both wrestlers on their feet as we begin period number three. Stelter kind of looking as if he wanted to look at a headlock, potential head throw here, but now they'll break away from each other and kind of restart. Glidden going down low. On that single leg, he's got that left leg, now coming back up to the feet, looking for a potential double leg. But Stelter really fighting that off. Stelter is gonna pick up the takedown, and now he'll release Glidden. Eight for the score here. And Stelter will look to try and close the gap with another takedown. 2-0 after one period. Ford of Black River leading crop of West Salem Bangor. You know, it's kind of nice, uh, the, the National Wrestling uh, or National, how do I say, High School Federation. Um, a rule change, there's a takedown by Glidden, and he's now back out in front with 20 seconds remaining, 10-4. But they changed the ruling on uh, the amount of rest in between matches now, Scott, from 45 to 30. I kind of thought that was a good move. Absolutely. Uh and it's definitely, you know, they're looking out. Number one priority is the safety of the kids, but 30 minutes seem, you know, is enough, I believe. The Federation believes, and uh, yeah. maybe not for us, but for 16, 17, 18-year-olds, <laughs> 30 minutes will do. Piece of, piece of cake for them, right? <laughs> well, Glidden is going to pick up the win. Wow, the score wound up 10-9 when everything was said and done. We got it. Uh, Stelter got a takedown and looked like some back points there right at the end, but hanging on was North Crawford Seneca, 10-9. Well, and the fact of the matter is when you're looking at this and with the, the length of tournaments and everything, they're out there, think about the practicing for, you know, hour and a half, two hours at every night after school. That's what they do. They train, uh, they're lifting, they're doing all kinds of things, you know, off off their practice time, they're in the best shape of their life. They, they're they going to handle a half an hour rest. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's, uh, you know, it, things like that are looked at, studied uh, over and over and over again. And mm -hmm. it, that's mm -hmm. not a decision that's made on a whim. So, right. yeah, you're right. That's, uh, I think it's in everybody's best interest. We're going to move to 113 pounds on the bottom half of the bracket, or on the uh, – screen here. This is going to be uh, Tristan Hughes of Kickapoo Lafarge coming in as the number four seed, taking on uh, the number five seed, Braden Sanford out of Prescott. Right now, Hughes has the takedown and he's got some back points. We're gonna get a pin at 175 pounds. Who picked up the win over there on, at 175? Was that, that Lund? It's, uh, Black River Falls should be forward of Black River, Ken. 
and that was at 175. Why do I not see? Oh, here he is. Okay, I got gotcha. you. All right, I'm going to turn my mic down here, and we'll leave it to you here, Scott. Top mat looks like should be Coder Kickapula Farge versus Ramirez West Salem Bangor. All right, underway, like I said, uh, top mat is Coder of Kickapula Farge. Ramirez, West Salem, Bangor at 285 pounds. Ramirez uh, with a bit of a head throw attempt there. Coder not... Uh, wanting anything to do with that still on our feet 126 to go first period no score at 285 pounds all right I'm back uh, now Scott they had a little question on uh, the streaming and I guess we're we're good we're up and running technical difficulties is that what we call Not, that yeah but it wasn't on uh, it wasn't on uh, my side for a change how about that <laughs> We'll take that. Yes, that's a victory. <laughs> so Here, uh, Ramirez with Salem Bangor with a takedown just under a minute to go first period on the top mat, Ken. Oh, thank you. Okay, I'm just kind of catching up on that 175 pound weight class. So 113, we got a 2-2 score here with Sanford and Hughes. Oh, check that. Uh, I'm off on what that is. That is uh, Poppenhagen and Eklund. Excuse me. I think uh, Hughes won that uh, first one. One uh, when I had to turn my mic down. He he uh, had his man on his back. Ramirez, West Salem, Bangor with another takedown, making it 4-1 here. The final seconds, period number one on the top mat. Three-two, our score. West Salem, Bangor, and Eklund on top with the lead right now. Top man, we've got a 4-1 score in favor of Ramirez, West Salem, Bangor over quarter, Kickapula Farge. Another one of our fine sponsors, the uh, VFW of Viroqua, helping us out today. Appreciate their terrific support of uh, high school athletics. And uh, VMH. Vernon Memorial Healthcare, so much care, so close. VFW, no one does more for veterans than the VFW in our area. <laughs> Trying to get the takedown here is uh, Poppenhagen. He trails by one. We're in the second period. Got a minute to go, just a touch over a minute in period number two yet. Seven one score top mat. Uh, Ramirez West Salem Bangor in control over Coder from Kickapoo Lafarge. 45 seconds left, second period.
It must be spring out, Scott. We got the door open over in the far corner. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Four three now after that takedown by Poppenhagen over Eklund. Eklund coming in at 0-2. Only a freshman, Poppenhagen, a sophomore at 24 and 14. And we got a barn burner of a match, 4-3. 19 seconds remaining. Got an injury timeout on the top mat, uh, Coder, the 285-pounder from Kickapoo Lafarge with a, looks like probably maybe a bloody lip. Um, getting that taken care of, cleaned up, put a little... Sav on it, and uh, looks like we're almost ready to resume. Okay. Well, we're going to move into period number three. Again, 4-3 the score. Poppenhagen will be in the top position as Eklund chooses down from West Salem, Bangor. Minute 40 to go here. Eklund trying to get some hand control in the bottom, but I tell you what, uh, Poppenhagen has kind of engulfed him a little bit here. End of two on the top, Matt. Seven to one the lead for Ramirez from West Salem, Bangor. Ramirez has choice here in the third. Coach is telling him they want neutral. Underway third period. Uh, Coder found a little new life here. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's uh, realizing time is working against him and a little more action than we've seen. Needs to be careful uh, throwing those arms out there. We're uh, borderline unnecessary roughness. Uh, don't want to do anything, especially at this point of the year, to get yep. thrown out of a match. And uh, Right. And sometimes, you know, the heat of the moment, that's, uh, you know, that's that's the tough part. And same time, you know, the wrestlers need to understand what's allowed and what isn't. And uh, mm -hmm. there's Correct. just no place for unnecessary roughness, flagrant type of things. I mean, it's need to do it the right way, I guess is what I'm saying. Yes. 6-3 the score now as Papenhagen has picked up a couple of back points, tried another turn, but not able to get anything. But 10 seconds to go here. He is going to pick up the win as he keeps Eklund down flat on the mat. And a final turn at the uh, buzzer. And no back points. He'll keep it at 6-3. So congratulations there. The number three seed moving on in uh, Poppenhagen. He'll wind up... Uh, Going up against Parker Milsna, the number two seed, later on here as, uh, as uh, Parker Milsna picked up the bye, along with Landon Conley, the number one seed. Well, on the bottom half of your screen, we are going to bump all the way up to 157 pounds. And let's take a look here. Job Welter is, uh, Wetter, excuse me, <laughs> Welter, where'd I come up with that one? There is a Welter maybe, but uh, this Job uh, Wetter, uh, Lance's son, the head coach, uh, he gets the bye coming in with a nice record of 20 and two, and he's only a sophomore, so watch out for that young man. And uh, right now below us here, it's gonna be, this is gonna be the number well, let's see here. Who do we have? We have West Salem, Bangor, and Prescott. So this is the number three or four and five seed. Jackson Ranallo of West Salem, Bangor. One and two is a freshman. Carter Larson of Prescott, nine and 18. 
He's a freshman as well. Always tough wrestling uh, those upper weights as you, you know, if you're a freshman in, in high school. Top mat, Ken, should be Thomas Dreger, West Salem Bangor, a sophomore, wrestling Stephen Atherton Prescott, 7-12, uh, and 12, a junior. Atherton came out, uh, quick takedown uh, to start the match out, but nothing since, working a little cradle there, not able to get it, uh, still being fairly aggressive on top, but looking for that cradle, looking for a, a bar or anything. Now he's able to, to lock up the cradle. Got near fall being counted. 20 seconds left, first period. Score here is 2-1, uh, and the reason it's 2-1 to one is because Larson of Prescott had locked his hands while uh, Ranala was, or not Lowell, excuse me, was on the mat. And uh, that technical violation gives it a 2-1 score here. Couple seconds remaining here in this first period. Time will run out. Five zero, top mat. Atherton Prescott leading just underway second period. Larson of Prescott chose the down position to begin period number two. And Ranallo puts the legs in right away trying to get a turn. <coughs> Two twenty nine pin Ken Stephen Atherton Prescott, your winner. Uh, top mat over Thomas Trigger. All right. That was the number four seed picking up the pin. Pinning combination here now by Prescott and Larson at 157, and he's going to get it. Coming away, <clears throat> excuse me, here with the victory. Larson, the number four seed, will move on, and he'll face uh, Job Wetter out of Boscobel in the semifinals. We're going to move to 157 on my map. It's going to be Demarcus Young Thunder out of Black River Falls. He's a freshman coming in at 7 and 15. Is going to take on another freshman out of this is going to be Cash from uh, Cash Seafelt from Wausau, who's three and five. So a couple of freshmen. Wrestling here, boy, a young weight class at 157 here, Scott. We've got five freshmen and two sophomores. Wow, that that's, is the <laughs> that's crazy. Very unusual, I would say, for <laughs> a 157 class. Yes. 106, yeah, maybe, but maybe. Uh, <laughs> but 157, yeah, no senior in here, no junior. Boy, right away, I tell you what, Seafelt is uh, going after a pinning combination after snagging that takedown. Top mat, Ken, I've got Markel Rags of Wausau East with a 125 pin over Gavin Garcia of Black River. Well, Garcia will look to come back through the uh, consolation side. Thanks going out to a couple more of those sponsors. Um, 
Vernon Manor Healthcare Center bringing you today's action. They're located on the north side of Viroqua. And uh, Vernon Electric Cooperative, you touched on energy cooperative with all kinds of uh, affordable electrical energy. I tell you what, that's one of the things that has not, uh, you know, gone up in price very much compared to some other, other uh, areas. Other resources, so electrical energy hanging in there. Well, we got a little uh, blood time there. Top match should be Carter Do Doherty, Turtle Lake Clayton, Landon Parrott, Black River Falls. Doherty with the early takedown, 120 left uh, first period. Doherty with a turn there, get near fall being counted. Referee Brad Rosh is holding two. And again, reason for holding that, he's still got that arm bar and you can only score one time off of each combination. Yep, that's right. <coughs> now a uh, solid uh, turn there, but Parrott actually able to roll through. We've got uh, the two point near fall, 4-0 lead. Carter Doherty, Turtle Lake Clayton leading Landon Parrott. Trying to get a pinning combination in with that far side cradle on the bottom half. Seafelt out of Wausau. Wausau East. Some long drives for a few of these teams today, I Ken. I guess so. Prescott, that's a good jaunt. Now they got to get the uh, nose fixed up here again. But you know, a lot of times uh, teams and schools, they like to go a little further outside of their their zone, so to speak, uh, because you know, you wanna see some different wrestling, different people. Yeah, absolutely, it, that's a, uh, I would have to think that's a win-win to uh, see some new faces and. Uh-huh. Um, when you think about it, so you've got Wausau East, you've got Prescott, uh, you've got Black River Falls, who probably doesn't come, you know, this way as far as the scenic bluffs very much, but they are in the Cooley. But they're not going to see those other two teams. And then, uh, um, you know, Boscobel coming up this way, that's a, that's a little bit of a trip, especially with the fog that we've had today. Right. Yeah, I think uh, just being third year, I think, uh, Jared and the crew looking to maybe even expand this tournament more and uh, go heading in the right direction. You know, that doesn't happen overnight. That, it, absolutely, you're right. Well, and you have your local with local teams with Cashton, Brookwood, Kickapoo Lafarge. West Salem Bangor uh, added in this year. They lost a tournament uh, due to uh, uh, rough weather a couple weeks ago. So it's nice to have them here. Now, whether or not they stay or not, that's another thing. But uh, but that's that's kind of the life, you know, the, the heartbeat, so to speak, of tournaments, you know. Some will come and go, and others kind of just, they just love coming here. Top, Matt, Ken, I've got Garrison Stockwell. Wausau East and Ashton Hank, Turtle Lake Clayton at 165 pounds. Okay, I have a 4-2 score right now at 157 with Seafelt still in the lead here and still right, trying to look for that far side cradle. Young Thunder of Black River Falls trying to get back to the base.
DeMarco's Young Thunder really fighting uh, off those pinning combinations here. Now a bit of a chest crusher kind of move here by Seafelt, and now a pinning combination that's really tight, and there it is. Seafelt, the number three seed, picking up the pin. What weight were you at, 65? Yes, Ken, uh, just finished Garrison Stockwell with a 116 pin over Austin Hank, Turtle Lake Clayton, 165 pounds. Stockwell, the number three seed, moving on. I'm going to go to 165 on the bottom half of your screen, folks. And this uh, should be, let's see, it looks like there's that Sparta. I have Prescott. I think that is, uh, yeah, it's uh, Prescott in Kinnaman. 11 and 17, a junior, the number five seed, taking on uh, Kaysen Krause, or Krause of Sparta, seven and eight. He is a senior. Top half, Ken, we've got a rematch of last night, actually. Jack Schreier of Cashton is a 21 and 10 senior wrestling Javon Rave, another senior from Black River Falls. I remember Rave from last night. <laughs> Krause, uh, the first name, I think I, I'm probably saying even Krause wrong, but uh, uh, Kaysen, I hope I'm saying that right, Kaysen Krause of Sparta, seven and eight. No score there as they continue to look each other into the eye. Another one of our sponsors is uh, Sleepy Hollow bringing in the action. Of course, there are three facilities on the north side of Viroqua. And Sealand's Carpetland, check out that renovated and uh, improved store. My goodness, the selection that they have down there, Sealand's Carpetland in, uh, in the heart of Coon Valley. <clears throat> same wrestlers, uh, same style of match as we had last night. Uh, <laughs> top mat here, Ken. Just a lot of arm fighting, hand fighting. Uh, not seeing much of anything as far as shots, but mm -hmm. uh, suspect that may change too. Is that I don't think uh, Mr. Rush, our official, is going to let these guys continue this pace for very long. Did they? Did those two wrestle last night? Yes. They did, okay. I, I was thinking they did, but, uh, and if I remember right, I think. Uh, Ryer picked up the victory. I don't remember if it was a decision or a pin. <laughs> yeah. It was a tight match for the first couple of minutes anyways. First couple of periods in it, I think third period, Schreier kind of took control. But, yeah. Uh, again, 0-0 zero, zero start of the second. Uh, Schreier starting in the down position. Mm-hmm. Prescott in Kinnaman trying to step over Krause, and he will be able to pick up the two for the reversal. Tying this match up, it says. I thought Krause was trailing two to nothing, but I guess I had the wrong leg band in my mind. That's the worst thing that happens today, Ken. We're going to be in good shape. <laughs> That's very true. Well, stay tuned. Uh, the next four weekends, folks, we're going to have a lot of high school wrestling uh, with conference tournaments going on. We'll have uh, the Cooley Conference Tournament on the Viroqua Twitch channel. We'll have the Scenic Bluffs Ridge and Valley on the Cashton channel, Cash and Twitch channel, and then the SWAL, SWC, that will be on, uh, and it sounds weird, I know, but it's going to be on the Westby 
uh, YouTube channel or YouTube on the uh, Twitch channel. All of these uh, tournaments will be on the WWVP YouTube channel later on. Oh, there's going to be a full Nelson. Krause, after picking up the reversal, winds up throwing in that full Nelson, and it's now 4-3 in favor of Krause. And nice we'll, job stopping <coughs> that as quick as he did, Ken. Yeah, yeah. Full Nelson, one of those moves that can cause some big-time damage if it's not stopped immediately. Absolutely, yeah. Colby Von Hayden doing a nice job. He's, uh, what is he now? Is, like, is he in his third year or so? Or I was just thinking about that. He, I'm going to say fourth, fifth maybe. Okay, yeah. Um, <coughs> one of the younger guys, but does a good job. Yeah, he's he's yeah. been fortunate to... Do a, quite a bit of varsity wrestling and uh, hope that's, he sticks around. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Top Matt, Jack Schreier, Cashton uh, going for that. Some call it Oklahoma, some call it Hammer. Um, Going to be end of the second period. A little chuckle there is our tapper uh, getting a little aggressive on his taps. This, the, that young man. <laughs> I saw. I think he was warming up on one of his buddies earlier before the tournament started. He was whacking them like crazy. Way back, and, and this uh, this might sound uh, whatever weird or. Maybe I was overly, uh, maybe I was a little too touchy about it, but they, he's got one of those foam things, so it kind of sounds worse than the feeling probably is. But, uh, you know, back, way back, uh, you know, they would wrap uh, towels with, uh, with tape, you know, and they, they were literally the towel tappers. And uh, I remember one tournament, uh, the, uh, <laughs> I was at, I was down south somewhere when I was coaching at Lancaster, and so one of the kids came out. I might have been a basketball tournament, but anyways, really smacked me in the back, and there was no reason to do it. You know, I didn't say anything until there's a pin by uh, Kinnaman out of Prescott. Uh, but at we came over to the head table, and I brought the young man over, and you know we were facing the the guys at the table, and just real quietly I said. From here on out, just touch me. <laughs> you don't need to smack me. <laughs> and he started laughing. He goes, sorry. <laughs> He's just over-exuberant on things. <laughs> Makes you wonder, maybe your fellow officials uh, put him up to it. I they wonder, you know, you, uh, you never know. Uh, I'm not saying that couldn't have happened, you know. <laughs> I see Kevin Erlinson as the off official here, and it wouldn't put it, wouldn't put it past him to uh, <laughs> encourage the young man to <laughs> give a little Get extra. <laughs> Five fifteen uh, pin here on the top hat. Jack Schreier going to be our winner. Not that there's any fun going on out there at all, right? Exactly. <laughs> or, or between officials. <laughs> oh. No, you know it's a real, uh, it's a unique. Uh, what do I want to say? Uh, cult. Cult. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> it certainly don't mean that in a negative way. No, it's, no. Uh, got a good crew here today. Yeah, Kevin Erlinson, Brad Rosh, Colby Von Hayden, Joe Poots. Uh, all experienced guys. All been around a number of years. Colby being the youngest. Um, but there's one way to learn, too. You, you have to, you just have to get out and do it. And, uh. A lot of credit to Colby and, and all of these guys. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, and you know, you you take a look. Joe's been in the state tournament. Uh, we know that, uh, you know, Kevin's been officiating for I don't know how many years. And he doesn't, re the interesting part with Kevin is he'll go through the regular season, but I know he's told me in the past, he was like, yeah, I, I don't need to do the tournament trail. <laughs> yeah, and Kevin, one of those guys, I've known Kevin for a long time, super good guy. Um, 
very good football official. Uh -huh. Done a yeah. number of state tournaments. Kevin, I know, has done some college football, uh, some semi-pro games. And football is his thing, and he'll, yep. he'll tell you that. Yep. And wrestling, he, he just does it. He enjoys it, but it, that's not his priority. And, yeah, uh, yeah. More power to him. Yep. Brad Rosh is going to be moving uh, into the sectionals and some team stuff coming down the road here, so that's pretty cool. And yeah, that's something, you know, Ken, it, I don't know that I would call it a plug for the WIA, but uh, officiating in general. I mean, if there's anybody out there <clears throat> wanting to get into it, get involved, thinking about it, talk to any of these guys, talk to the coaches, talk to the ADs. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not hard to get involved, and in, and I promise it's something you won't regret. It's uh, Yep, yep. Did it for a long time, 35 years. and uh, Is that right? I knew you'd made, done it a long time. Made some great friends, you know, yep. lifelong friendships. It's, yep. uh, I didn't realize it was 35 years. That's great. I'm getting old, Ken. <laughs> oh, no. no. <laughs> We're just more and more seasoned, right? There, I like that word. <laughs> I like your choice of words. I'm going to go to 175 pounds on the bottom half of your screen. And uh, we're going to have uh, stepping out here, Sam Wiedemeyer of Brookwood, 3-26. and 26. He's a freshman, giving it a shot. He's going to wrestle the number two seed in uh, Ford out of Black River Falls. Wiedemeyer is going to get the first takedown here. Top man, I've got Logan Engel. Sparta is a 16 and 17 sophomore. He's taking on Daniel Fells. Wausau East, three and 13, a freshman. Wiedemeyer trying to uh, work a pinning combination here and now up and out is Ford back on their feet, two to one in favor of the young Brookwood wrestler. Wiedemeyer with a high crotch shot in here. Boy, he's got a nice shot going for a double leg. And uh, he is going to fade out and pick up the takedown again. Nice little fade out. And now he's coming in with the cross face. He's got a turn. Going to pick up some back points here. And he has Ford trying to fight off this pinning combination right now. Angle of Sparta in control, second period uh, over Daniel Fells, Wausau East. I think we've got blood, yes, blood on an elbow. Angle in control, 13 0, second period. And I think uh, we got something here. We're going to get a illegal, illegal hold here on the pinning combination. I'm not sure what happened here, but Wiedemeyer leads 7 to 2, picking up the near fob, and then he gave up the point whatever the illegal hold was. Wiedemeyer gonna try and go in again. He's gonna get a little bit high here. And uh, he's trying to get back. He's gonna give up, uh, looks like the reversal. Trying to fight it off as much as possible. No, uh, no points issued yet here. And what are we gonna do here? We're gonna go one, yep. One for the escape. Uh, for Ford of Black River Falls. Interesting situation there as Wiedemeyer nearly got himself in a little trouble. Ford will choose the down position. Wiedemeyer back on top and the whistle starting once again. And again, Wiedemeyer goes with that, goes underneath. He's got this uh, reverse half Nelson here on Ford. In good position is Sam Wiedemeyer, and he's going to pick up the pin. Wow, Wiedemeyer with a pin here to move into the semifinals. He'll wrestle the winner between Benny Culver coming up here and Quinton Holt.
top man, Logan Engel, still with that 13-0 lead, uh, trying to finish this off with a tech fall or a fall. Uh, needs to be careful. He's got an arm bar in deep, but uh, needs to make sure and keep it at a 45-degree angle. It was getting a little high, it appeared, but obviously keeping it legal. Kevin Erlinson got a good look at it. Um, got a two-point near fall. That will make it a tech fall end of the second. Our winner is going to be Logan Engel of Sparta.